Hello and thank you for coming along to the next video of my Inventor Tips and Tricks series. This one is all about how to take a couple of parts in an assembly and where some parts intersect with each other. Like for example, this is a gear, this is like a strip back gearbox casing. We've got a couple of shafts, a couple of plastic housings, and where the two objects intersect with each other, uh, that being here and here, we want to remove the material from the gearbox housing to accommodate where this object is sitting. As you can see at the moment, there is no cut they're just clashing there so we want to remove the material same goes for this casing over here uh, where this part intersects the casing here we want to create a cut out of the plastic or whatever it is metal uh, gearbox casing how would you normally do that well nine times out of ten if I ask somebody how they would do this what they would say is they would create a sketch on this face here they would then use the outer edge of this gearbox housing uh, to project a where's the most outer edge there they would project a sketch line on the face of this part here and they would use that circular profile to extrude a cut through the casing just make sure it's not big enough to cut through and there you go it's done the job but the problem being if you opened up this assembly and somebody else had done that you're working on somebody else's model if you were to then edit this casing here and you know this this isn't far-fetched pie in the sky stuff this generally does happen the edge which I'd used to project onto that casing is actually formed by this chamfer feature here now if I was to delete that chamfer and say well you know we don't want a chamfer anymore we actually want to fill it there we're on a nice sort of rounded edge there on that casing uh, the original edge which was used to project onto this face to create the extrusion no longer exists so you're going to get errors like this appear in your assemblies, and these are commonplace across a lot of assemblies in production. Features which were originally created and then them edges used to make further features, when they no longer exist, errors start happening. And it's big. It's a big problem in assemblies, and it causes people headaches. Sometimes to an extent where people start saying, well, I'll tell you what, we're just not going to allow that anymore in assemblies. You're just not allowed to create projected geometry between two parts in an assembly and that's kind of counterproductive it, it it removes a massive aspect of inventors intelligence from designing assemblies and designing products how would you sh or how should you do this right well the first thing we should do is just completely forget about sketching extrusions and projecting geometry we're going to utilize two tools in inventors arsenal called sculpt and copy object they're not commonly accessed in inventor not a lot of people know about them if the, if you do great good for you if not hopefully you'll learn something here so i'm going to edit this part in the assembly double click this housing here this is the part which is going to have the cut in the this is this is the part that's going to have material removed if you like and what I need to do is to tell Inventor where the where the the, the volume is. How how is it going to create the cut? Is it's going to take the volume of the other parts and do a subtraction? The only way you can do that realistically and reliably is to use the copy object tool. Now in Inventor 2015, it's been hidden. It doesn't. It's not frequently used enough to uh, occupy real estate on the ribbon bar, so they've moved it down here. But when you select copy object, what you do is you select the objects in the assembly you need to be editing the part in the assembly so you can see the objects in the background to transfer their bodies as associative either surfaces or a composite into this part file and that then gives you an orange transparent surface representation of these parts but inside this part here and the associative meaning if these parts do move these associative surfaces will move with them what you then do is you access the sculpt command now this is on the surface panel if you can't see it press the drop down arrow next to patch and activate sculpt with sculpt active you select your composite surfaces or you know whatever you've converted them into and inventor first wants to create material it wants to you know, the, the preview goes green meaning it wants to create material we don't want it to do that we want it to cut or remove material it then highlight starts highlighting uh, what it's going to remove now you need to be a bit careful here because the graphical red representation of what it's going to remove is a bit buggy if you press or untick the preview and then retick it sometimes you get a different it does different things. If you, if you find that it's not doing what you visibly expected it to do, press the more arrow here and then toggle this little option here. Uh, if it does it, great. If it doesn't, it, it, it's very glitchy. Um, but in this case, as I'm doing it now, it's really, it, this is, um, it's like for like. It's doing what I expect it to do. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to remove the interference areas here where this shaft intersects this casing. I want it to remove here, it's going to remove some material there, and it's going to remove some material there. Happy days. Press OK, 
and it does just that. It's removed the material where those four objects intersected each other. However, what it has left us with are some areas where there was no interference, there was no clash there, there was nothing the sculpt uh, could remove. What do you do about these? Well, some people might, you know, sort of create like an, an external sketch profile around here and use an extrusion to cut that away. Don't do that. The proper way of doing this is again just to select this drop down arrow here and select delete face. We're not going to delete faces, we're actually going to delete a lump or a void. Select that object there, that object there, and that will completely remove them from the equation completely. Job's good. One. And then press return, and that's it done. That's it absolutely done. We've now got a reliable and adaptive cut feature in this casing where all these parts intersect with each other. Just to prove that this does work, if I grab and slowly move away the shaft feature here, there's the cut. If I let go, because those objects don't intersect anymore, way it's removed the cut. Move it back over, it's recreated the cut. So wherever, you, you, you're free to play with this now. You can then move these around, move them to suit. It doesn't matter where they are, it will always create the cut feature for you. Now, if you do need a bit of a tolerance to work with here, say, you know, as, as it is, it's an exact one, you know, it's cutting material as it's touching it. There is no tolerance there. We need to create a bit of tolerance. So the easiest thing to do here is edit this part, that face there, we just want to offset it back, maybe like half a mil or so, just to create a bit of tolerance. Um, underneath, uh, it's I think it's here, yeah, yeah, on, on the modify panel, this button here, you might see combine, uh, but press the drop down arrow and then select thicken and offset. Select this face here, toggle the direction, and say put in a distance of half a mil. And it will just remove that face and it will just offset it back half a mil and give you a bit of tolerance there. It's that small, visually, you can't really see that it's done it, but trust me, it has done it. Press return, and jobs are good. So that's how to effectively, and kind of in a best practice way, use some objects to adaptively create cuts in, in parts and allow those features to move in conjunction with where your parts are in the assembly. And that's the best way to do it, the most reliable way to do it, I've found. So hopefully that was useful for you guys. If it was, please press like on the video, put some comments in the video as well. So uh, I know you guys are watching it and you're interested in it and you found it useful. That would be great. It helps me out a lot. Keeps me interested as well. And so, yeah, thanks very much, guys. And until next time, I will see you guys later on. Cheers.